Dr. Jawahar Shurishetti, who has a doctorate in psychology. He is also a celebrated author of international bestsellers on parenting. He advises the government of India on policy issues and innovations in education, startups, and youth affairs. Uh, he is popularly known worldwide as a think professor uh, for his art of thinking. He engages uh, with 2.4 lakh children and parents across the globe through UN expedition called Explora, exploring the minds of youth. Uh, Dr. Jawara Shurshati, thanks for uh, agreeing to talk to us and have a conversation on something to do with a very specific um, uh, some set of questions we want to discuss. And welcome to the conversation. Thank you. Uh, sir, I would like to ask you a first, uh, question, which I think um, we probably need to address to a lot of parents. Uh, mm -hmm. is uh, why do you think we need schools? Uh, I'm talking especially about the brick and mortar kind of a schools, the physical schools. Uh, see, I cannot uh, completely write off uh, brick and mortar schools, uh, though I have not experienced them, but uh, uh, the basic uh, reason why I propose that we should have brick and mortar schools is one, that the touch is uh, the sensation of touch is uh, not present on any other platforms apart from brick and mortar. Uh, the touch and smell, these are the two things which are very important for learning, and that's why the brick and mortar schools. Okay. So, do you see anything else in terms of learning wise? Uh, learning, there is uh, uh, something uh, uh, which which is again a part of the emotional intelligence. Where uh, suppose a pat on the back is there. Uh, a virtual pat on the back is not as effective until I feel it on my back. Uh, so uh, there is a great amount of motivation if there is a pat on the back. So learning becomes better. Okay. But what are in terms of outcome, the children who go out of schools and then they see their future in terms of it. So do you think the schools, the brick and mortar format of schools, physical schools will make difference? I, I don't think so. Uh, in fact, in many cases, the brick and mortar schools do a lot of harm to the children uh, in the terms of uh, the very old traditional methods of learning which are not fit for today's children. So uh, they, they might be fit for today's teachers, uh, which are a generation older. But for today's children, it has to be something which is uh, fit to their ecosystem and not uh, fit to the ecosystem of the school administration or the teachers. But that is not usually the view of the schools. And that is the reason why the, when the learning outcomes of the children as they go out of school uh, are uh, compromised. Yeah, now I to see your background, uh, you have come with a combination of learning process that could be, I could term them as a home school, an alternative school or self-learning. Uh, because uh, some of the examples which you have given us in some of your previous talks, I understand that you learned English through seeing an alphabet of movie uh, yeah. screen titles and things like that, like Dawn as one of the examples yeah. which you give. Uh, so do you think such learning requires a structure for early education? Uh, yes, yes, uh, it requires. The, uh, mine was by chance. It was not by choice. So in uh, learning uh, which is unstructured or which is out of school, uh, there is a structure required because there is a scientific way in which we, we learn. Uh, there are processes to be put in place. Uh, there are uh, uh, also sequences. There is sequential learning happening. And also there is a differential learning. Uh, so uh, in, in my case, somehow all things fell into place, but that's a chance. Uh, we will need to structure the unstructured learning uh, out of school. Uh, to be able to get the outcomes desired to match the school learning or at least uh, uh, to give the desired minimum outcomes that are required for passing out of school. Okay, I see. Now, assuming that what you're saying that the structure is required, either it happens at school or at home or a combination of various other people involved in this, uh, because of the pandemic, their parents are trying to explore homeschooling or trying to teach children at home. Uh, but the challenge these parents are who have come from a structured learning, uh, which are physical contact of schools, uh, learning in a brick and mortar kind of format. And they have a really limited understanding how do they go about trying to help the child at home. And uh, they are in search of structure, always uh, trying to help the child. So your thoughts are the same. Yes, uh, you are right in the context that parents are conditioned to see the brick and mortar kind of learning happening in school. Uh, it is to their convenience also, I am being very blunt. Uh, the convenience is that they get their time for themselves. Uh, 
if the when the children go to school apart from the learning outcomes that are, that happen in the school so what has happened now is uh, the parenting that is happening now is uh, that uh, we have tried to outsource school education to the schools earlier it used to be a combination of home and school so we have uh, outsourced it completely to schools and whatever little time is left we have uh, uh, outsourced it to tuition centers so the parent has lost habit of uh, being a part of the learning of the children teaching learning process earlier it used to be maybe our parents would, would sit with us and uh, do something but uh, we have lost touch so in a pandemic kind of situation where you are locked down in your homes uh, the parents are finding it very difficult to deal with uh, uh the child at home seeing him all the day and they are not getting the time uh, which is a by product so having said that uh, the conditioning of our parents is and the teachers also is that online learning or learning which is not happening in school is actually not learning that satisfaction from within uh, it does not come and that is why we see in india online courses in schools Uh, do not do very very well. Even in tuitions, we don't see online tuitions doing very well. Uh, so this is something to do with the conditioning of the parents and the way they have been brought up, the ecosystem, etc. And nothing to do with learning actually. Uh, the mm-hmm. child may pace himself uh, in an online platform. Uh, he has a choice of uh, picking up the best teachers uh, from across the world. Uh, and there are many other advantages uh, on online learning which might not he got to get stuck to a teacher if the teacher is not very good uh, he my, the learning the outcomes might not be as good so these are all problems happen in school and uh, still the parents think that uh, uh, online learning is not learning at all and that is the reason the yearn for sending the children to school uh, more so when there is a pandemic and there is a conflict between uh the child's health and uh, a school they are ready to compromise the learning uh, without uh, sending them to school but they creep about the online learning platforms uh, the uh, addiction of mobiles etc right yeah but there is also a split of opinion in terms of online learning recently i'm seeing like government of karnataka <coughs> announced yesterday in in, in terms of order saying like uh, till grade 5 there won't be any classes but there are parents who want to have classes online because they feel that the child will waste time sitting watching television or playing games on mobile and we won't be able to do anything for the child sitting at home all the time your thoughts on that yes that is what i was saying see uh, one of the major reasons is not learning is because the parent does not find time for himself uh, so this is what i have said so i would like to have something for the child so that he is engaged in the learning process rather than not going to school and not having anything uh, but but uh, i see in this situation we should not ban uh, online classes or anything maybe the structure of learning uh, for primary schools and early years should be changed that's okay uh, the, there might be a limitation of the online content being provided but uh, you cannot uh, say that no learning will happen even if it is uh, zero learning at home Uh, you cannot prohibit and that order by karnataka government doesn't uh, seem very progressive especially uh, with bangalore being an it hub i see a mismatch between the governance and the uh, enterprise uh, sir i have one question to you understand about structural learning form of learning especially the school format where there is a lot of competition which happens for various activities so does a competition brings a message to all those people who are not winning that they are inefficient or underperformer uh so does the cycle of perception harming the society uh it harms it harms not that competition is bad uh psychologically competition sets fire on your uh, backs uh so it makes you run faster mm-hmm. but uh, the perception of the society and again the, the conditioning of the previous generation which is the parents and teachers which means my generation uh is such that there is a numbers game and the neighbor's child if he brings in one percent more than my child i will overlook all other aspects or achievement that the child my child has uh, and just compare numbers to numbers uh, whereas my child may be might be better orator mm-hmm. maybe he is participating in many co curricular activities he might be good in sports etc etc but we tend to ignore and just look at the mark sheets and compare 
so this is unnecessary competition because i have seen i can prove this because uh, 12th you have uh, we do something called predictopus uh, so across the schools 10th and 12th boards in february after the pre board exams i conduct predictopus and i ask teachers to predict the marks they will get out of 100 in the uh, board exams uh, which is not there in their hands and they send it to me there are prizes also announced uh, i keep those uh, marks secret when the result comes and we compare we see that the teachers have gone absolutely haywire uh, so till the time internal marking of the school is happening the teachers bias is okay because i like this child so i'll give him more marks whether he writes something better than somebody has written better or not but if he is mischievous in class doesn't listen to me then my bias stays but in a board exam all these biases go and your assessment of or perception of a child's uh, performance goes absolutely haywire uh, and that is the reason why i am saying that any perception of the teachers or parents in just judging the academic performances based on the discipline of the child or the handwriting or things which are inconsequential to the actual learning of the child are not are detrimental to the child his confidence may be uh, broken at times when uh, he is uh, regularly being undermined despite he is knowing that he has better potential uh, dr sir what would happen to those students like for example if i get to know in my class i am not first rank student at all and other perception is in my mind as a child in among the peers then will i not even try to become a first rank holder or will i say that okay i don't belong to that category let me not think about it so th- that is the reason why uh, we have the grading system uh, where uh, ranks are not uh, done so you have a b c d grades and we uh, put students in that bracket so there is no first rank so there might be 10 students in uh, grade a who uh, in the course of the next quarter uh, maybe somebody from b climbs into a uh, we don't exactly know whether he is 90 or 100 or 85 but he is in that block so there is a motivation to go from b to a c to b and d to c uh, but that is also not a you are ultimately bracketing the students in something but i see these days uh, rather than uh, our times when we were too much uh, stressed about these ranks Uh, including our parents uh, these ch- uh, children are chilled out uh, they are not too much bothered if they want to do something they will do that uh, whether they are in the fourth rank or first rank or 10th rank they are chilled out so it's a learning experience from these children for the parents uh, that try to be as chilled out as them uh, instead of trying to demean their efforts uh, and, and not, motivation is okay but labeling by in uh, by teachers in the classroom Uh, and demeaning the efforts of the children because my neighbor's child is better uh, by the parents are two major factors which demotivate the children which again does not demotivate this generation because they are children sir could you tell us more of your platform which you created for youth to interact with uh, others and with you uh, we would like to know more about it okay so we have uh, something called the religion of youth which i have been running for the last uh, many years Uh, and we have been uh, through the un platforms uh, through a lot of platforms across the world i have been interacting with around a lack of youth every year and uh, that gives me uh, a perspective of what the youth are thinking last uh, that is the, yesterday we have started something called youth talks now uh, this youth talks is uh, precisely the reason why uh, i want the youth to come into the forefront of leadership is because Uh, the average age of parliament is 57 years uh, and uh, most of the ministers are past 60 and they are creating policies of education of youth affairs of sports which they have not experienced they have a two generation gap between the youth of today and them and the policy makers don't understand actually what are the aspirations of these youth so what we are trying to do so uh, whether there is a school opening or education at times of pandemic whether it is higher or school education we see politicians mm-hmm. speaking we see bureaucrats speaking we see teachers speaking parents speaking but we don't see the children speaking so this is a platform which we want the children to speak and tomorrow onwards we have the first uh, and i i have done around eight interviews yesterday with youths from across north to south east to west 
they have been terrific terrific means eye openers for me and the ideas that they give and the, the understanding that they have about the system uh, is is phenomenal and i think we should learn from them there is nothing that we can do except for learn from them okay uh, wonderful sir thanks for sharing and uh, your views uh, definitely make uh, what is known known worldwide about you as think professor and uh, thanks for your uh, insights on some of the interesting questions i know they are not easy for giving an s and no a typically a structured outcome uh, i thank you for your time and uh, it was wonderful to talk to you thank you thank you QTLearn is offering live, interactive, fun online sessions. These classes are made available at zero cost to new learners for a brief period. Join us and spend quite time in learning and innovating. For registration, look at the description box below.